Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. So glad you're with us, and we hope that you will take advantage of all the opportunities you have to study God's Word with us. 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville, or 250 the Boulevard in Eden. Tonight we're going to be looking at some more questions from from the mailbag, you might say, email bag. And but tonight, but first we're going to give you our content information. 276-340-2653 if you'd like to reach me, word from the Lord at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to email me with your Bible questions, uh, it's a good way to study the Bible. And as I said, this is going to be the format tonight. We're going to be taking another Bible question that we got from someone who wrote in asking us a question. You know, one thing that I like about the question bag or, or answering people's questions, especially on TV, is because you get to know what they're thinking. Sometimes you're on TV and you're bringing a lesson and you think, well, I wonder if this is really something people are thinking about. But when you when they send in the question, you know someone's thinking about it. And it could very well be that that several people are thinking about these questions. And so you get to answer a question that can help a lot of people. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. Take this question from the question bag uh, for, uh, sent in by a viewer. I think maybe this person was watching on uh, YouTube. Uh, watching some of our older videos, but nonetheless, it was a question that came to me, and so we want to answer that very question. Here's the question. Do you consider the church of God, from 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 Corinthians 1, also a biblical church? I tried to find church of Christ, but could not. What part of the New Testament is it located? Are you actually basing your complete claim of the only true church on one verse in the whole Bible where all the churches are greeting each other. Romans 16, 16. Am I correct? If it were the only true church, why were they not corrected in Scripture? Well, a lot of good questions there. We'll try to answer them all and uh, give you some, some explanation. And uh, just to answer the first part, Yes, I believe the church, that Church of God, the Church of God, is a scriptural name. No doubt about it. The Bible is uh, full of instances where the church is called the Church of God. But here's the thing, and maybe the, maybe the writer doesn't realize this, but there's only one kind of church in the Bible. So when you're talking about one kind of church, then you have to stop and think, well, maybe it's being identified as different ways. Maybe it's being mentioned in a different uh, uh, shape, you might say, or, or talking about a different uh, uh, characteristic of the church. Because when we're talking about one church in the body, just notice what the Bible says. In Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23, and this is a verse that probably many are familiar with. We go to this uh, quite often, but sometimes individuals don't uh, maybe have to hear things several times for it to sink in. And he hath put all things under his feet gave him to be the head over all things to the church, singular, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the church is the body, and we know from Ephesians 4 and verse 4 that there is only one body. So if there's only one body, all right, one body, Ephesians 4 and verse 4, so if there's only one body and it's the church, then there's only one church. So how is it then that Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, for example, and this is what the, the writer indicated, 1 Corinthians 1, and verse 2, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, how is it that Paul talks about the church of God and not the church of Christ? Well, think about it for a minute. Paul is writing to the church of God at Corinth. But the same man, the Apostle Paul, is writing to the Romans, the letter to the Romans in Romans 16 and verse 16. And he says, the churches of Christ salute you. Now, is Paul saying there's two different kinds of churches? Or is he not simply identifying the church of God when all collectively together they're called the churches of Christ. So he's not talking about he's not talking about one denomination or one group of a denomination, the churches of Christ, saluting another denomination. He's not, he's not talking about that way. 
It has to be that these have to be talking about the same kind of church. Now, you might be saying, well, how is that the case? Well, let's just let's think about this for a minute. Maybe in order to uh, answer this question, maybe what we need to do is we need to discuss not just the church of God, but maybe we need to just go and start with God. I submit to you the church of God is the church of Christ, but in order to understand that, let's just talk about God for a minute. Because here's what I think maybe the, the, the writer is not understanding. <clears throat> when we're talking about God, when we say God, oftentimes we're referring to a particular person in the Godhead. And we say God, and then we say Jesus, and then we say the Holy Spirit. But let's just look at this term God for a minute. God is simply a reference to deity or a supreme being. Alright, so when we're talking about the church of God, then we're talking about a church that belongs to a supreme being, a deity. Alright, now God possesses a divine nature. Alright, let's look at 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature. Now this word divine is used in another place that will help us understand what we're talking about when we talk about God. Divine is actually a word for deity or divinity. Alright, let's look at Acts 17 and verse 29. Acts 17, verse 29. Paul is writing to, or he's, he's speaking uh, to a group of people at Athens, and they are very, very superstitious, very religious. They have all kinds of gods, all kinds of idols all over the place. But then he says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, and he's talking about the God they didn't know, they didn't know about. He says, For then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the, and here's that word, the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. So here's Godhead. Don't think that Godhead or divinity or the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone that is carved by man's hands. Don't think about it that way. See, you're thinking about God in the wrong sense. They were thinking about God in the sense of, well, God is a graven image over here. And they had altars to these graven images. Just like today, people think that God is maybe a, a little Buddha over here, a little fat man that they rub his belly. Well, no, God's not like that. They think, well, God is a, is a cow over here. God is, a, is an animal. God is a tree. No, that's not God. That's not the divine nature. That is not the, the deity. Some say that God is a, is a particular man. You know, the Mormons think that that Jesus was, uh, was a man and he became a God. Well, you know what? The Muslims think that's the same thing. All right? So here we're talking about people don't understand the divine nature. All right, so here's the divinity that we're talking about. Let's look at one more verse here, Colossians 2 and verse 9. Colossians 2 verse 9. Paul, talking about Jesus, says, For in him, that's Christ, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, Bodily, in him dwells the fullness of the divinity, bodily. bodily. So Christ was the, the embodiment of this divine nature. Now, if you start looking at God, the word God, in the sense of we're talking about a divine nature or a deity, that will really help you when you're talking about the church of God or anything else about God. <coughs> we're talking about a... A, a being that has a divine nature. Now, when we're talking about God, we're not talking about a singular God in the sense of there is only one person who has this divine nature. There are actually three persons that possess this, this divine nature. All right? Now, we're, so we're talking about three beings that all possess this divine nature. And Collectively, they are God. They are deity. 
And there is only one divine nature that is possessed by these three beings. Now, I know they're individuals, Muslims, uh, apostolics, talk about there's only one God, and they're monotheistic, and they think that when they say monotheistic, they mean there's only one God and there's only one person of God. But God actually means a divine nature. And there are individuals, there are, there's more than one being that possesses this divine nature. How do I know? Because I know when I start reading the Bible, from the very outset, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when you get down to Genesis chapter 1, and verse uh, 20, what, 6, uh, listen to what God said. God said, now remember, right up until this point, up until this point, we don't know something about God. If we just start reading, we just know that there is a divine being, a, a supreme being that's created all the world up to this point. And God said, let us. Now who's us? Now us implies there's more than one. So God said, let us make man in our image. Our indicates there's more than one. So there is more than one represented in God, but yet there's still only one divine nature. There's only one deity. There's only one uh, divine nature that happens to be possessed by three beings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, so this divine nature exists in three, we'll say three persons or three personalities, three individuals, but there's still only one God, one divine nature, but yet three beings possess that divine nature. God the Father, John 1 verse 18, John 1 and verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So here we're talking about no one has seen this divine being, this divine nature at any time, except or the only begotten Son has declared him. So we're seeing that here is God the Father, God the Father that's being talked about. So here is one... Uh, what? One person that possesses this divine being, God the Father. The Father who is deity, the Father that possesses this divine nature. And he is the Father in the sense of another person of the Godhead has become his Son. Alright? In the beginning was the Word. If we go back to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was divine. The Word was deity. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now let's come on down. Let's come on down to verse uh, uh, 14. And the word, what? The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So here is deity what came, became flesh. The divine nature became flesh flesh, was made flesh, and he, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So here you have, you have the, the, the Father, the Father and the Word existing, and both are deity, both, both are divine. Well, there wasn't a uh, God the Father until there was God the Son. So that just like I, I was not always a father. But I became a father when I had a child. When my wife had a child, I became a father. All right, so now I'm, I'm existing. I existed long before I was a father. So God existed in, the, in some form, not as the father, but he became the father when Christ came into the world. So this divine being, this supreme being, Divine nature that exists in three persons, God the Father, and also the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. He's deity. Now, how do I know that? How do I know that the Spirit is divine? Well, look at this. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, and verse 16, 
Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Well, this is the Spirit of this divine nature. So what we're talking about? We're talking about another person that possesses this divine nature. So the Spirit is divine, deity, and so is Christ. Christ has this divine nature as well. So all of these individuals, all of these, these persons, you might say, these beings, all possess this divine nature. You have God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, and God, the Son. Yet there's only one of these divine natures. And that's what we're talking about. So you say God, the church of God, we're actually talking about a divine being, a divine nature. And so that is very, you might say, a very generic way to talk about God or using that term. They are all deity. They are all divine. So think about when you see the word God, think about it in that sense. Not as a, a one particular being, but rather as a divine nature. Now, here's why we say this. Because Jesus is God. He is deity. Because he possesses this singular divine nature. It's the divine nature that's singular, not the persons in the Godhead, but the divine nature that they all possess. Hebrews 1 verse 8, But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, who's doing the talking here? God the Father. The Father who has, who has a divine nature, who possesses this divine nature, says unto the Son, Thy throne, O God, so here Christ is the Son, but yet He still is referred to as God, as deity, as divine. All right? Jesus is God. He's God. And Jesus then said, what belongs to Him also belongs to God the Father. Why? Because they all have the same divine nature. John 17, verse 10. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now, I hope I'm not going too fast here if, there's, if I have any questions. I'll tell you what, uh, Matt, we're, we'll go a little bit early. Go ahead and put the phone lines up. But you hear what we're saying? See what we're saying, friends? We're talking about a divine nature, a deity. And so the church of God is referencing not a denomination, not a particular uh, religious sect over here that you might see going down the highway or in the yellow pages, but we're talking about a church that belongs to a divine being, a deity. And Jesus said that what is mine is thine, and thine are mine. So Jesus and the Father, Jesus, God the, the Son, and God the Father, are united in this, in this one aspect. They, have, they share the same thing. Whatever is Christ belongs to God. Whatever belongs to God belongs to Christ. Now, if Jesus then said, He is going to build His church, but yet what belongs to him also belongs to God. What does that tell us? That tells us that the church that Jesus built also belongs to the Father. Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whose church was it? Whose church was it that, that Jesus said he was going to build? Well, it was his. Is he deity? Yes. Is he God? Yes. Is he divine? Yes. Are all the things that belong to Him, do they belong to God the Father as well? Yes. That's true. So it is the church of Christ and the church of God all in one, one and the same. Now, what, what church are we talking about here? Well, let's look at this. Let's look at this. In 1st... How about that? Get the wrong... First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Deity was manifested in the flesh. That's Christ. That's Christ. We know Christ was manifested in the flesh. John 1 verse 14. We just read that. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preaching to the Gentiles. Believed on The 
Let's see here. Well. Can't get it to go up here. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. Sorry, I was, I was in the wrong verse anyway. I want verse 15. Sorry about that. 1 Timothy 3, 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Well, who is being referred to? Who's being referenced here when we're talking about God? The house of God. The house of deity. The divine nature. The house of a divine supreme being. The church of the living God. The pillar on the ground of the truth. Well, we know that Christ is the one who said he was going to build his church. And he is God. He is deity. See that? So... We know this has reference to the same church that he built, even though it's called the church of the living God. Now, am I supposed to say, well, uh, the church of Christ is not, a, is not a correct name? Because here, the Bible says it's the church of the living God. Well, if everything that belongs to Christ belongs to the Father, and everything that belongs to the Father belongs to the Son, and the Son has a church that belongs to him because he is divine and he is deity, then doesn't it belong to the, the Father as well? See that? So here's what we're talking about. We're talking about the church that Christ built must belong to the Father as well. So why not say that it belongs to Christ? Why would it not be called the church of Christ, the church that belongs to Christ, if in fact he's the one that bought it? If the church belongs to Christ and he is divine, he is this deity, he possesses this divine nature, then it also belongs to the Father who possesses the same divine nature. So it is the church of God. The church of Christ is the church of God. Now is that, really, is that hard? Is that hard to understand? When you're talking about they are one and the same, they have equality one with another, then you start to realize, you know what, they, the church of God is the church of Christ. The church of God is the church of Christ. Now, let me just go back just for a moment because I want to make sure I get all of these questions. I didn't repeat this question here. Uh, I tried to find the church of Christ but could not. Well, friends, if you found the church in the New Testament... You found the church of Christ. You just happened to find where it was, where it was uh, identified as the church of God a couple of places. And therefore you said, well, it can't be the church of Christ. But when you stop and think about the, when you stop and think about the fact that the church of God is the church of Christ then you know you find the right one. All right, now, let's see here. Let me get back to where we want to be. All right. Now, consider again another verse here, Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. Now this is Paul and he's writing to the elders of the church at Ephesus. Or he's talking to them actually. He's not writing to them. He's talking to them. Take heed unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now Specifically, who is it that purchased the church? It's not God the Father. 
We know it's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the, 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 the divine Spirit of God that shed His blood. God is a Spirit. The Father is a Spirit. And they that worship Him in Spirit and truth. John 4, 24. Now, here Christ says God is a Spirit. But notice the next verse says, For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. So we're talking about God the Father in, the, in John 4, verse 24. But here, Paul says that the Holy Spirit made these men overseers to feed the church of God. Why would he call it the church of God if it belongs to Christ? Because he's emphasizing that Christ is deity. Now, one thing, friends, you, you might need to consider this. In the first century, one of the prominent reasons why people, the, the church was being persecuted was because they were preaching that Christ was the Son of God, that He was deity. Now, if they just went around saying He's just a man, like, uh, uh, like, like the Muslims say, you know, well, He's just a man, He's the prophet. If, if they went around saying that, they wouldn't have a problem. But when... Paul or the other New Testament writers talk about the church of God and individuals know that they're talking about the church that Christ built. They're emphasizing the deity of Christ. See that? They're emphasizing the deity of Christ. They're reminding people that Christ is the Son of God. Now, I know that ruffles a lot of feathers. In some parts of the world today, most but see the reason why most people have a problem with this is because they don't realize that this is what is being said. It's just another way to remind the readers and to remind the hearers that Christ is deity. Now you and I, if those so so called people that believe in Jesus Christ, we believe that He's the Son of God. Alright? But when Paul is writing this, there are a lot of people around that will get mad if you said that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God. So he says, instead of saying, feed the church of Christ, he says, feed the church of God, showing that Christ is deity, which he purchased with his own blood. Now, who was it that purchased the church? Who was it that purchased the church with his own blood? Well, it wasn't God the Father, and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It had to be God. Now, if I want to emphasize the church of Christ and not make a big deal around among people that thought that Jesus was just a man, I might say just the church of Christ. But to emphasize his deity, you say the church of God. You're in the word from the Lord. Uh, good evening, James. Hello. Uh, was the word church mentioned before Jesus came to be? Was the one church mentioned? Was the word church? Uh, was the word church mentioned before Jesus came to be? Well, uh, I can't recall actually it being in the Old Testament, but I know that the children of Israel were called the church in the wilderness in Acts 7. So okay. it was, uh, let's see, the church in the wilderness. I'm thinking that's uh, Acts 7 about verse, not 13. Be on down here about, what, 23, I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking uh, Acts 1723. Have me right here. Acts 1723. Uh, no, 23, 23, 25, 26, somewhere in here. Anyway, it's in it's in Acts 7, the church in the wilderness. Uh let me just find it in my my real Bible here. So, so to answer your point, uh, well, thirty-eight. Accept, did God accept have a church before Jesus named his church? Uh, the, the, um, this rock I will build my church. Did God was the world 
did the world have a church? Now, say, say, so what's the question again? Did the world, did did the world, ha, did God own the world as His church before Jesus came? Are you saying the world? Yes, did, sir. What was okay? Was the was the was the okay? The church. God, did did God have a church before Jesus came? The church, the church was always God's plan for when Jesus came. Now, let me, let me show you this. All right. By the way, that's Acts 7, 38. The church in the wilderness. The children of Israel wandering in the wilderness were called the church in the wilderness. But, but notice this. In Ephesians uh, 3 and verse 10, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the manifold might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God always planned on the church to be a part of man's salvation. And it wasn't established until Christ established it. All right, Christ paid for it with his blood. So the church wasn't established. It was not established until Christ established it, but it was in the mind of God. It was in God's plan all along. Does that help? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks you. for your call. All right. All right. Yeah, so the church was always in the mind of God. Now, remember, God said, let us make man in our own image. Now, who's he talking to? He was talking to the Word, the Holy Spirit. They were all there. They were all part of deity, all divine. So if the church was the manifold wisdom of God, eternal in the mind of deity, well, that would be in the mind of Christ too. So when the Word, the, here's the Word in the beginning, the Word knows that when we put this plan in place, the Word knows that I'm going to be manifest as a man, come as a man. I'm going to be God in the flesh, the fullness of God bodily, and I'm going to die on the cross, and I'm going to establish a church. Why? Because that was our plan. That was the plan of this divine nature, this, this deity that has always existed. And so the church was in the mind of God from the very beginning. So, so Christ knew that it was part of the plan all along. And that's why he came to earth to implement that plan. But here's the thing. Jesus is the one who shed his blood for the church. Now, it's the church of God. He's deity. He's the deity that, uh, that died for the church. Now, the writer asked about the church, you know, where was it in the Bible? You know, why was it not corrected? Well, here's what you need to understand then, my friend. If the church of God was purchased with the blood of Christ, then to whom does it belong? Does it belong to Jesus? Or does it belong to God the Father? It belongs to both. It belongs to both because they both are deity. They're all unified in this. They're all together in this. The, the, Jesus said, my Father and I are one. Why? They have the same divine nature. So it belongs to both. But it was Jesus who specifically paid for it. Therefore, it's the church of Christ as opposed to the church of the Father or the church of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we don't say, well, what about the church of the Holy Spirit? It's never called the church of the Holy Spirit. But when you say the church of God, you're referencing the divine nature that belongs to the Holy Spirit. All right? So when we're talking about the church of God, we're talking about the church of Christ. Now, let me help you out here. Maybe this will help. Talking about the church of God versus the church of Christ. Think about this way. God is a general term. It's a broad term because it talks... God could be referencing 
the, the divinity of the Holy Spirit, the divinity of the Father, or the divinity of Christ, the deity of Christ, the, de the deity of the Holy Spirit, or the deity of, God, of the Father. Now, if I said, well, or just say you, you said to me, well, James, I'm going to go to the department store. My grandmother used to say the department store. We're going to the department store. Why? Because it's a, it's a store. It has all these different departments in it. You've got the women's clothes, the men's clothes, the kids' clothes over here. You know, if it's like Sears, you just got, you know, the, the softer side of Sears over here, and then you got the lawnmowers and, the, you know, wash and dryers. You've got the, all these different departments in it. Right? You go to Walmart. What is it? It's a department store. How do you know? Well, you got women's apparel, men's apparel, kids' apparel. You got groceries over here. That's the department. You got the department, the the electronic department. You got the automotive department. You got the hunting, the sporting goods department. All the different departments, lawn and garden department, different departments. So if you just said a department store, that's that's a very generic term. What store are you going to? I'm going to the department store. Okay. Well, if there was only one department store in town, you would know which one it was. But now if you want to be specific, you'll say, well, I'm going to J.C. Penney. That's a specific department store. If I'm going to Sears, that's a specific department store. But still, it's a department store, right? If I said I'm going to the department store, I might be talking about J.C. Penney or Sears or Walmart, whatever. But if I give specifics, you know exactly which store I'm talking about. Now, let's put that, let's put that with the church. If Paul says the church of God, he's making reference to the fact that it is a church that belongs to a supreme being, deity. Now, specifically, it belongs to Christ. It's the church of Christ. Now you know exactly which divine being owns the church or bought the church, paid for the church. Now the reason why the church of God and the church of Christ are the same in the Bible, we'll get to in a minute. But don't think, don't think that, well, James, if I say the church of God, I might be referring to the Baptist church, the Methodist church, whatever church, and then I get specific and say the Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Lutheran church. No, they are not all part of the church of Christ or the church of God for that matter. And here's how I know that. Here's how I know that. Because when the Bible is speaking of the church of God in a general sense, it's telling us who it belongs to, a divine being. Specifically, it belongs to Christ. All right? Specifically, bonds of Christ. But now, you have individuals that will say, well, what about, what about all these different churches? Because they're part of the church, they're part of the church too. That's what they'll say. Listen to what this caller says. Show it in the Bible. Here, show it in the Bible. Here, let me start here the all over, John. What church are you in? I'm in a, I'm in a brethren church. All right, show it in the Bible. Here, I'm going to show it in the Bible. Here, here's the church I'm in. The church of Christ. Churches, what church are you in? The churches of Christ. It says the churches of Christ. Uh, people listen. It says the churches, not the church. The oh. churches of Christ. Wow. Uh, yeah, you got me there. Anybody, the churches of Christ. It says the churches of Christ. Uh, people listen. It says the churches, not the church. All right. So there it is. He said, it says the church is. It says church is of Christ. Well, what does that mean, friends? Does that mean that all these different denominations out here, the Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Brethren, Episcopalian, that they're all part of the church of God? Is that like saying the church of God department store? And then you want to get specific and you say, well, you got the Baptist department store, the Methodist department store, the Lutheran department store, the Brethren department store? No. No. How do I know that? 
Because in the Bible, the only church that's mentioned in connection with the uh, church of God is the church of Christ. They're all the same. The church of the living God, the church of the firstborn, they're all the same. We're talking about the same kind of church. Now, how do I know, how do I know that they're different? Because when you start talking to people about the church in the Bible, they can't find the church they're in in the Bible. They can't find the church they're in in the Bible. I think it's strange. I think this is very interesting that, that people are astounded that we're saying that the Bible teaches that there's one church in the Bible and it's the church of Christ which is also the church of God. Listen again what the, what the writer says. Are you actually basing your complete claim on the true only of the only true church on one verse in the whole Bible while all the churches are greeting each other? Well, is one verse enough? I mean, how many verses do you need? How many verses do you need? Listen to what, uh, let's see, uh, I'll find this here. Mr. Laws says. Acts, what is it? 20. Okay. 28. Well, uh, let me put this in and, and because our time's getting short. The thing about it is I'm going to cover what the Word of God says about the church. The word church in the original Greek is the word ecclesia, the called out. It's referred to as the church of God. It's only referred to as the church of Christ, I think, two different times. It's only referred to as the church of Christ, I think, two different times. It's only referred to as the church of Christ, I think, two different times. It's only referred to as the church of Christ, I think, two different times. Well, actually, churches of Christ only found one time. I made this point when Mr. Law said this. But you know what? One time is still more than the Baptist churches were found. You never find the Baptist church in the Bible, but for some reason, for some reason, people are amazed when we say, well, here's a verse that says the churches of Christ salute you. And that's referring to the churches of God that you find somewhere else. We're talking about all the churches of God put together. They're also called the churches of Christ. Now, why is that so amazing? Why is that so astounding that, that, uh, that one verse is all you need? I mean, listen to this. People who say the church of Christ is not the same as the church of God. Even though, even though you, you can't find the churches of Christ, uh, even though you can find the church of Christ in the Bible, all right. They, oh, well, you mean you're, that's the only church in the Bible? That's the same as the church of God? You can only find it one place in the Bible? Now, these same people, these same people who don't want us to say the church of Christ is the same as the church of God, they then turn around and want to say that all the denominations are part of the church of God, even though you can't find them in the Bible. Come on, man. Really? Are we supposed to accept that? I can find where the Bible talks about the churches of Christ, Romans 16, 16. I can find in Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church, meaning it, refer, it, it, it belongs to him. And yet I'm not supposed to say that the church of God is the church of Christ. But yet... I'm supposed to accept the fact that the I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to accept as fact that the Baptist Church, the Brethren Church, the Lutheran Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Episcopalian Church, the Methodist Church, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Firstborn, Number Seven, is the Church of God. When I can't find those in the Bible, what's up with that? Well, what's wrong? What's wrong with us? 
You know? How, how, how can you ever accept that? But see, here's individuals that they just do not want the truth to be said because it hurts them. It hits them, it hits them uh, really, really close here, you might say. Listen to this next man. I want you to listen to this next man talk about the church of Christ and the Baptist church. Let's see if I can find them here. Um, I think I can do it this way. No, let me come right here. Sorry about this. You know, Jesus didn't cut the enemies of the truth any slack. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm all for being compassionate on those who need compassion, but those who are preaching error, you know, and who are obviously teaching error, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going I'm to come out there with both barrels. Well, of course, who says they're preaching error? And I, I well, agree I, I, with I, you I, a I'll lot. Look, I'll look by the word. make that opinion. I'll look by the word, and I find that they're preaching error. Like, like well, Mr. Roberts. Well, you talk about baptism so much. I'm sorry? Uh, you talk about baptism, in which I've been baptized, and uh, I was baptized in uh, uh, July of 1942. And uh, when I accepted Jesus Christ at Samaria Baptist Church on the Pool Road, outside of Raleigh, east of Raleigh, and I've been a Christian ever since. Well, well, here's the thing, though. I, no, I thought you were baptized in the Baptist Church. I was. So why are you a Baptist Christian? Church. Why are you? Why, as a Christian, are you in a Baptist Church? Because I am a Christian. And now, how can, now, sir, how can you be a Christian and be in the Baptist Church? Well, see, so there you go down and other people. No. You think you got to be a member of the Church of Christ? Do you, do you, you think, think you have to be a member of the Church of Christ? What do you think about are you a member of the Church right? Are you a member of the Church of Christ? No, sir. Are you a member of the Church of Christ? No, sir. Are you a member of the Church of Christ? No, sir. Are you a member of the Church of Christ? No, sir. All right, now. That right there tells me, here's a man, he's a member of the Baptist church, and he's many, uh, He's not a member of the church of Christ. Well, I can find the church of Christ in the Bible. So when Paul says in Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you, I know this, that the Baptist church is not one of those churches. Right? See how easy that is? The churches of Christ salute you, and this man says he's not a member of the church of Christ. Therefore, he's not a member of one of those churches that Paul was writing about. And yet, we're the bad guys because we talk about the Lord's church, the church of Christ, being the one true church. Well, I think it's strange. I think it's strange that people won't say that the church you can read about in the Bible is not the church of God, but the churches you can't read about in the Bible, they insist that they are. So how can I know that the churches of Christ are the same as the churches of God? How do I know? How am I so convinced about it, you might be saying? Well, here's how. Here's how. Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Let me put this up here. Well, we can read a little better. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Paul says, For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. What kind of church was Paul teaching in? Well, he's teaching the church of God. That's right. Who, who, who purchased the church of God that Paul was preaching in? Jesus? Christ? So the church of Christ is what Paul was preaching in. He taught the same thing in every church. You know what that tells me? That tells me that, number one, Paul was not preaching in all these denominations that weren't even thought of, weren't even established until, what, 15, 16, 1700 years later. The Catholic Church would be the earliest church that you can find that would be established. And that's in 600 A.D. So at best, 600 years later, you've got a church that comes along. It cannot be, the Catholic Church cannot be the church that Paul was talking about. 
But Paul taught the same thing everywhere in every church. Now I know all these churches out here that claim to be part of the churches of God, whether they're the church of God denomination that's headquartered in Cleveland, Tennessee, or whether it's the, uh, the, the Seventh-day Adventist, or the, the Mormons, or the Lutherans, or the Presbyterians, or whatever, I know they're not part of the church of God. I know they're not one of the churches of Christ that Paul's talking about because they all teach something different. But Paul said, I teach the same thing in every church. Now, if that's the case, if that's the case, they must have all been the same. They must have all been the same kind because they were all teaching the same thing. How do I know that? Look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 1. Paul said, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has promised him to be no against when I come. How was it that Paul was giving an order, a command, to churches of Galatia that he also gave to the church of Corinth. He was able to do that because they were the same kind of churches. They were talking the same thing. They were preaching the same thing. That's why. That's why they could teach the same thing in all churches. That's why Paul could send Timothy to uh, Corinth and have him preach the same thing that Paul was preaching at Corinth, or the same thing that Paul was preaching at Macedonia, or the same thing that Paul was preaching in Philippi. That's the same reason why in Titus chapter 1, Paul says to Titus in verse, uh, I believe it's verse 5, For this cause left out thee in Crete, an island out there in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, Charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Or excuse me, set things in order. Right? How's that? How's that even possible? Well, it's because they were teaching the same thing. That's why he tells Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh, you are abiding at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that teach no other doctrine. Well, well, Paul, don't you know that all these churches are different, so they're going to be teaching different doctrines? No, they're all the same kind of church. They're all the churches of God. They're all the churches of Christ. And that's exactly what Paul calls them in, first, in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 22. He says, I was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they, all, they only knew only that he which persecuted the saints, persecuted us in time past, now preach the faith that once destroyed. And they glorified God in me. They're all the same kind of churches. So here's the thing. I know that the church of God and the church of Christ that you read about in the Bible are the same kind. How do I know that? Because they all taught the same thing. They all had the same thing preached to them. They all allowed the same thing to preach in them. Now, I guarantee you I couldn't go to a Baptist church and preach the truth of God's word, I'd be run out. I know that for a fact. Why? Because the Baptist preacher tells me, you don't come preach a different doctrine in here. Well, it's only different because it's the truth and what he's preaching is not. See, Paul gave the same commands to many different churches, so they must have all been the same kind. So here's what we're talking about, friends. The churches in the Bible all look the same in the sense of they all follow the same doctrine. They all walk by the same rule, all mind the same thing. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. And that's why, like in the Bible, you have the, the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 2. You have the church at Jerusalem, Acts 15 and verse 22, or 11 22. You have the church of Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, in Revelation, the seven churches of Asia. They're all the same kind of churches. The church at Babylon, Paul, uh, Peter wrote to 1 Peter 5 and verse 13. The church at Antioch in, in Acts 13, verse 1. The church at Sincrea, Romans 16, verse 1. All the same kind of churches. Why? Because they all follow the same doctrine. And if they were all the churches of God, then they were all the churches of Christ. 
because there was only one church that Christ built. There's only one kind of church that he paid his blood, shed his blood for and purchased. And that was his church that belongs to him. Deity. The church of deity. The church of God. And Jesus is deity. So friends, how do I know the church of Christ is the same as the church of God in the Bible? Because there's only one God. One deity. One divine nature. And only one person of that Godhead shed his blood for the church. And that is Jesus Christ. So I'm going to call it the church of Christ. Let's be specific. I'm talking about the church that Christ, my Lord and Savior, died for. That's the church I'm a member of, and this is the church you need to be a member of if you want to follow the Bible. If we can help you do that, we want to do that very thing. We want to encourage you. We're about out of time, so I'm going to put my contact information up here so that you can know how to reach me, 276-340-2653. If I can assist you in any way, I want to do that very thing. Keep the comments coming. Keep the questions coming. We'll answer some more another time. Always remember to make sure that when you ask a question that your answer is a word from the Lord. Have a good night.